first tonight before Russia. Forget the culture wars just for a second over bathrooms, drag shows, pronouns, books, etc. Something much bigger is already happening. And no surprise, perhaps, it is starting in San Francisco. We're talking about slavery reparations. The committee in San Francisco to decide these things hasn't done an analysis of the proposal's costs, but the negotiation starts at payments of $5 million to every eligible black adult, the elimination of personal debt and tax burdens, guaranteed annual income of at least $97,000 for 250 years, Homes in San Francisco, just $1 for a family. No, this is not a joke. This is the actual proposal. To qualify, someone would have to prove they're over 18 years old, have identified as black or African American on public records for at least 10 years. And then there are two other criteria, which could still change. But right now, you have to meet two of these. Being born in or migrated to San Francisco between 1940 and 1996, lived in the city for 13 years or more, displaced from San Francisco by urban renewal between 1954 and 73. You could be the descendant of someone who was displaced between 54 and 73. Being a person incarcerated by the war on drugs, the descendant of someone who was incarcerated by the war on drugs, attending the city's public schools before they were fully desegregated, or descending from a person who was a U.S. slave before 1865. John Dennis is chair of the Republican Party in San Francisco. He's gonna join us in a moment. No surprise, he opposes the policy, but we start with Justin Hansford, professor of law at Howard University. Professor, it's good to see you. Um, how did you come up with this criteria for how you qualify? Well, one of the interesting things about this proposal is that it was preceded by one of the more, more specific, thorough research endeavors by the city council's commission to try to detail specifically what were the harms and what would the appropriate remedies be in a perfect world? There were over 111 proposals that have been put forward. Uh, this is one of them, but this is more so the appraisal, not the, the final price, if you will. This is the true analysis based on uh, a group that was tasked with trying to determine what the actual harm would be in today's dollars. So you said in a, in a perfect world. The one thing that I haven't seen in the appraisals is how much this is all going to cost. Was that part of the analysis? Uh, my understanding is that that part of the analysis uh, is, is forthcoming. There are economists who are working on that. And uh, I think for us at this stage, the, the figure of that jumps out to everybody is five million uh, per person. I know that there's a, a budget uh, also that San Francisco taxpayers need to worry about. But we should sit with this dollar figure and ask ourselves, why is that figure so high? Maybe there's something that we don't know about the history and how that history continues to impact, okay. uh, especially black people in the city of San Francisco. Uh, Stanford University, at least, has done some analysis. You may have seen this. Uh, it would cost each non-black family in the city at least uh, $600,000. Why should people who live in a state that has never had slavery and who people who have never had slaves, some of whom were minorities themselves and persecuted as well. Why should they pay people who've never been enslaved themselves? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. You know, I think as a country, uh, we spend billions of dollars to right wrongs and provide care uh, for harms that we ourselves as individuals may not have been uh, participating in. We're spending over $100 billion in Ukraine, and I haven't been involved in, in bombing Ukraine. But the, uh, to get to your point, I think that ultimately uh, what, we're sh what has been shown in this report is that there are ongoing lingering effects, not only of enslavement, but also Jim Crow segregation, housing segregation. That $14 trillion wealth gap, which you uh, showed the figure of on the screen, is the direct result of policies undertaken by the United States government and by our city governments. And I you, think it's you, very you, that our city governments are doing this analysis now before our federal government has had the ability to step up and do so. That brings us to exactly what my next point was. And you study these things both on a micro level at the city level, but also the macro level, right, of, of how the, the federal government deals with this. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider.
And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.